Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem called make array elements equal to zero. It sounds simple, but it has some neat mechanics that we'll break down together. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the full problem description. Don't worry about reading every single word. I'll summarize the important parts. At a high level, the goal is pretty clear. We have an array, and we need to zero it out by following a specific set of rules. We need to count how many initial choices lead to success. The first step is making a choice. We can only start on an element that's already zero. Once we pick one of those spots, we then have to decide, are we going left, or are we going right? This pair of choices, where to start and which way to go, is what we call a selection. Now for the movement rules. Think of it like a little robot. If it lands on a zero, it just keeps cruising along. But if it hits a positive number, it's like a bumper. The robot does three things. It chips away at the number, making it smaller by one. Then it completely reverses its direction. And finally, it takes a step in that new direction. The whole process stops if our robot walks off either end of the array. So a valid selection is any starting choice that successfully clears the board. If we follow the rules and end up with an array of all zeros, we count that starting choice as one valid way. Our final answer is just the total count of all these valid ways. Let's look at the example. The array is 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. The correct answer is 2. The problem tells us that starting at the first 0 and going left works, and starting at the second 0 and also going left works. It's interesting that starting at that second 0 and going right doesn't work. This hints that the logic isn't as simple as it first seems. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. The logic is what's important and I'll be showing the full code for Java, C++, and JavaScript towards the end of the video. Okay, the first and most straightforward idea is simulation. Why not just do exactly what the problem asks? We can write a program that finds every starting zero. For each of those, we'll run a full simulation of the process, first trying to go left, and then trying again by going right. If either of those simulations ends with an all-zero array, we add one to our count. We've talked about the big picture and the logic for the simulation. Now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first. And don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Alright, here's the Python code for our simulation approach. You can see it's split into a main function and a helper function called isValid. Let's break down how this works. The main function is our coordinator. First, it handles an edge case. If the array is already all zeros, then any starting zero and any direction is valid. There are n spots and two directions for each, so that's n times two selections. Otherwise it loops through the array. Whenever it finds a zero at index i, it calls our isValid helper function for both directions, negative one for left, and positive one for right. The isValid function does the heavy lifting. Crucially, it works on a copy of the original array, which we create by using list, nums. This ensures each simulation starts fresh. The function runs a while loop as long as there are positive numbers left and our pointer is within the array's boundaries. When the loop finishes, we simply check if we manage to eliminate all the non-zero numbers. Inside the loop is the core logic. If the number at our current position is positive, we decrement it. If that decrement makes it zero, we also decrement our non-zero's counter. Then, we flip our direction by multiplying it by negative one. Finally, whether we hit a positive number or a zero, we take a step in the current direction. This loop repeats until we either finish the job or fly off the edge of the array. So the simulation works, but it's very slow for larger inputs. There has to be a more clever way. Instead of actually walking the path, let's think about the total amount of work that needs to be done. For any potential starting zero, we can split the work into two parts, the sum of all numbers to its left and the sum of all numbers to its right. It turns out there's a beautiful relationship between these sums and whether a path is valid starting by moving to the right, will only succeed if the sum of numbers on the left is greater than or equal to the sum on the right. And symmetrically, starting left is valid only if the right sum is greater than or equal to the left sum. The one tricky part is when the sums are exactly equal. In that case, even though both conditions are met, it seems to count as only a single valid outcome. This insight lets us avoid simulation entirely and just work with sums which is much much faster. Let's see how we can code this up. And here is the code for the prefix sum approach. It's much shorter. There's no helper function, just a single loop. Let's walk through how it uses the sum insight to get the answer. First, we calculate the total sum of the entire array just once. We also initialize a left sum to zero. Then, we start looping through the array. 
Inside the loop, after we're done processing an element, we add its value to our running left sum. Inside the loop, for each element we can easily find the right sum, it's just the total sum, minus the left sum we've accumulated so far, minus the current number itself. If the current number is a zero, we apply our rules. We calculate two booleans, go right, and go left, based on the sum comparisons. That weird looking subtraction part, just handles the edge case where a side has a sum of zero. If both directions are valid, and the sums are equal, we add one to our answer. Otherwise, we add up the boolean results, which adds one, if only one direction was valid, and zero, if neither were. So let's compare these two solutions. The simulation approach has a time complexity of roughly order n squared times m, where n is the array length, and m is the max element. This can get very slow. It also uses order n space for the array copies. In contrast, the prefix sum approach is a huge improvement. It runs in order n time, because we only pass through the array once. And it uses order 1, or constant, extra space. It's clearly the better solution. Alright, that covers the main solution in Python. As promised, for those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++ and JavaScript. I won't be breaking these down, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. Alright, as promised, here is the full solution in Java. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Hopefully seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up. We saw two very different ways to solve this problem. The first was a direct simulation, which is a great starting point, but often not the most efficient. The second, much better solution, came from a clever insight about the sums of numbers on either side of our starting point. This shows how looking for higher level patterns, like using prefix sums, can dramatically improve your algorithm. All right, before we finish up, I want to quickly show you a personal project I built to solve a problem that always drove me crazy. It's an app called My Daily To Do. My biggest frustration with every other to-do app was retyping the same things every single day. Go to the gym, review code, work on the daily leak code problem. You know the drill. So I built my app around one simple but powerful idea separating your routine tasks from your one-off tasks. Routine tasks, marked with the little refresh icon, automatically reset for the next day. One-off tasks, like ship new feature, get the little puff of smoke icon, and they disappear for good once you're done. This small change turns a dumb checklist into a smart scheduler. If that sounds useful, you can try it right now on the web, the link is in the description. And one more thing I wanna make super clear. Right now, as a thank you for being an early supporter, the app is 100% free. There are no ads and no subscriptions whatsoever. This means you get access to everything, including really powerful features like presets, which let you save entire task lists and load them with a single tap. Now down the road, creating new presets will likely become part of a premium plan to help support the channel. But, and this is the important part, any presets you create now, while it's all free, are yours to keep and use forever. So it's the perfect time to check it out on the web play with all the features, and build out your perfect setup at no cost. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leak code easy, medium, or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.